Good morning. How are you? Welcome to the morning live stream. I'm Bill DeWeese, and uh, we get together every weekday morning to talk about voiceover. Today's topic is the first of uh, it's a multifaceted concept, and we'll I'll talk about it at least for the next two days, maybe three days. The most important thing in voiceover. Uh, let me just just say first of all, my name is Bill DeWeese. I'm a professional voiceover talent and voiceover career coach. We get together every weekday morning right around 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern time to just share a thought or two regarding voiceover to help get you started off on the right foot for the day in voiceover, to help you be successful in voiceover. What I mean by that is to be profitable, to teach you practical strategies, concepts, ideas to help you make money in voiceover. And it's our custom here when you come into the live stream. If you're new, let me know that, make a comment, but let me know who you are and where you're watching or listening from this morning. We'll do a little roll call here in just a in just a couple of minutes, and I see folks are already checking in. So, what is the most important thing in voiceover? The mo most important thing in voiceover covers a broad swath of real estate in voiceover. It's not just a single thing; it's multifaceted, and really, its fingers reach through everything in voiceover. And I think if you understand and you master this concept then your success will be more than you could possibly imagine in voiceover. And, and the idea, the thing I want to talk about, the most important thing in voiceover is communication. Communication has its fingerprint on every successful voiceover business in every facet of every voiceover business. And today, let me talk specifically about voiceover performance. We, most of us come to voiceover with the idea, and understandably so, that voiceover is about, it's about your voice. It's about, it's about how you sound. Um, we grew up watching television, listening to radio. You know, when we were kids, we heard the big, thundering, booming voices on media, and we thought to have a good voice, you needed to be a guy, and your voice needed to be deep and low and resonant, and that the more that you had that, uh, or even, or, or you're a woman and you have a very, you know, a pleasing sounding voice. Maybe you you have still have the, a great authoritative voice, or maybe you're just, I don't know. You sound good, okay? Whatever how you define, whatever sound good is to you. And so we come to voiceover with that idea that if I can just sound like that person, if I can sound as good as them, I'll be successful in voiceover. I quickly learned, and this is one of the big lessons for me, is after becoming a coach especially, uh, even more so than as a talent, uh, I realized that that doesn't really account for a whole lot of success in voiceover in terms of, uh, it's not bad, it doesn't hurt you to have a, a nice voice, but it's certainly not a prerequisite. And some of the greatest voices out there, represented by some of the biggest agencies in the world, were rarely ever working and uh, were calling me up asking me for help because they, they wanted to work. They needed to make money. Having a job once every two or three years, just even if it was a big job, just wasn't enough to keep, you know, to support them. Um, so if it's not the sound of your voice, what is it? Well, it's your ability to connect with other people, which is communication. Remember as a child, maybe you had a parent or an older sibling or a friend who uh, told you stories and you loved it when they told you stories because it captured your imagination. And uh, have you ever had, do you have kids? Uh, and do you, have you ever had your kids, you read a story and they're like, oh, mommy, daddy, more, more, read it again, read it again, read it again. Or ask a kid, you remember asking a parent uh, or somebody else to, to read the story again and again and again. We didn't ask them to do that because we like the sound of their voice so much, the pitch, the resonance of their voice. We enjoyed it so much, it meant so much to us, and we wanted them, wanted them to do it again and again. It's because it captured our imagination because the focus of the communication was not on them. When we think about sound and how we sound, we're thinking about us, all right? It, it's all about us. Communication is not about you. Communication is about the person that you're directing the message to. So it can be a, it's a paradigm shift for many people 
So if you've, if you've been approaching this from, do I, you know, do I sound good enough? Does my voice, you know, do I need to develop my voice? No, you don't need to develop your voice. You need to develop your communication skills because at the end of the day, like in all things in life, it's not about me and it's not about you. It's really about other people. And if you want to be successful in voiceover, you have to take the focus off of you and on to the person that you're communicating to. Now in voiceover, it's a little more abstract, obviously, much like in broadcasting, at least in broadcasting, you know, you've got the phone line and people are calling and saying stuff to you and commenting on what's happening. In voiceover, it's very isolated. So we don't, there's no feedback loop, which, you know, in, in everyday real life communication, so we communicate something, we get feedback, either in spoken word or through body language or whatever. We have an, a sense of how it's, whether it's landing or not, if it's understood or not. In voiceover, we don't. So that makes it even more important that we are focused on understanding who we're talking to, the story that we're communicating, uh, making it personal. Because, you know, going back to when I was uh, back when I was talking about when we're kids, we hear people tell stories. They tell the story in a way to engage our imagination. Again, not to make themselves sound good. Remember, your, your mom or your dad wasn't focused on them. They were focused on you. They wanted you to enjoy it. You know, if they changed voices or they became dramatic, it was not, they weren't thinking, do I sound good as I do this? No, they, they were thinking, what, what will cause little Billy DeWeese to really enjoy this? To laugh or, you know, to, to, to identify with the characters. It, the focus was on me or you. That's what made it so good. And so that's the beginning. That's, that's just the very, that's the baseline. The beginning of communication is it's about the other person. It's not about you. And you do need to speak from your own personal experience, meaning make it personal, speaking from your point of view, using your personality, speaking with emotion, again, based out of your own experience. Uh, but when you begin to move in that direction, you know, a funny thing happens is people start paying attention. Where before you struggled and struggled to win auditions, all of a sudden people are starting to respond. You're getting shortlisted. You're actually hired to do more jobs. You're developing relationships with clients who like your work. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. And there's more to communication than that. But that is really, I mean, that's where it starts. It starts when what we do behind the microphone and it's about putting the focus and the spotlight on the other person, not on you, but the person who's receiving the message. And when we approach it that way, it's amazing the difference that it can make um, in, our, in our voiceover businesses. Try it. Try it. See if I'm not right. Comment below to, to, to share your thoughts on that. By the way, speaking of which, make sure if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. You'll get notifications when I go live or when any other um, content is posted on the channel. I want to keep you in the loop, let you know what's going there. Also below the video in the description, you're going to find links to, to learn more about my voiceover coaching, my voiceover demo production services, and recommended equipment and resources and all kinds of cool and good stuff. So check that out. All right. If you haven't yet, check in on the live stream chat. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. Wow. Lots of people. I think we broke a record today. I applaud you. Thank you for being here. I think we broke a record in terms of people on the live stream. Lots of comments as well. Let me get to those. Fred from Cameroon. Good morning, my friend. Curtis, what's up in Clearwater, Florida? I hope, I hope, I hope everything's okay. I mean, you know, I still have the, the images burned in my mind from, uh, from the news. And of course, here in the Midwest, where we were purely spectators, uh, but you've been in our thoughts and prayers. Hope you're doing okay. Stephen Bucyrus, Ohio. Neil in Moxville, North Carolina. Chuck, Augusta, Georgia. Good morning to you. Christopher uh, is sipping on some of that cherry coffee that I love. I'm liking it. Wife isn't impressed, though. You know, it's not everybody's cup of tea or cup of coffee, so to speak. Um, I'm not a big flavored coffee guy myself. I don't particularly like flavored coffee, but for some reason, the Meyer brand, 
they're they're well, it's called Frederick's Coffee now, but it's their in-house brand, Meyer Grocery Stores. Their Michigan Cherry Coffee, I just Vicky and I just absolutely love it. Uh, Bruce says, "Happy Hump Day all from Louisville, Kentucky, and Happy Hump Day to you, Bruce." Hey, guy from St. Louis. Oh, and thank you, Steve and Oshkosh. Good morning. Edward in Sunrise Beach, Montana. Are there beaches in Montana? MO is Montana, right? That's not Missouri, is it? MI MI is Michigan. Okay, I may have that messed up. Sorry about that. Michigan, Missouri, Montana. M I M S. Uh John in Telica Plains, Tennessee. All right, John. Hey Barb in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Philip. In Tokyo, where it is cold and rainy today, we'll stay stay warm and dry. Janet in Florida, uh, David in Lexington, Gertie in Belgium. Good morning, Gertie. David, Louisville is in the house. Okay, Blue, what's up in New Jersey? Hope you have an awesome day as well. Hey, Darren, um, checking in from his studio in Shropshire, UK, just before lunch. What's for lunch today, Darren? I hope it's something good. I'm sure it is something good. Hey, Bruce, Doug in Greensboro, North Carolina. You're welcome. Emmanuel in Puerto Rico. Good to have you on this morning. Uh, We certainly have a worldwide audience. Hey, Dean in Broken Arrow. He says uh, he has an incredibly deep voice. He's had hundreds of compliments his whole life. That's why he finally wants to give this a shot. Dean, and that, again, that, and that's great. And please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Having a, a great sounding voice is not a bad thing. But what you'll learn is you can't lean on that. That alone won't take you over the finish line. You take that, you, you take what God gave you, and you certainly develop that to the best of your ability. But then you use it to communicate. Otherwise, it's, it's like, um, think of it this way. Say you have a you have a beautiful wardrobe, but if it sits in your closet, it's dead. It's lifeless. It, it doesn't mean anything. You have to wear it. Has to be expressed through you. I don't know if that analogy is good or not. If it lands, but it has to be. You know, the voice has to be animated by your personality. Uh, in and of itself, you know. Otherwise, you were just AI. You know, we're no different from AI. Hey, Israel in Zimbabwe, how are you doing this morning? Piper in British Columbia. That's right, Bruce, Chevrolet, discover new roads, (laughs) no doubt. (laughs) I love it. Love that reference. Love that line. Uh, Rusty in the UP of Michigan. What's up, Robert, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hey, Rob in Loveland, how are you doing this morning? Oh, we've got Illinois in the house. All right. Chris in Shelby, Ohio. Uh, Let's see here. Dorita, good morning and happy hump day to you as well. Eric in Richmond, Texas, also known as Tejas. Ah, got it. Okay. Uh, Because you made reference to that this morning and I wasn't familiar with that. John in Harleysville. Brandy in Idaho. Bruce, you're welcome. Susan, good morning in New Jersey. She says she loves these nuggets, so thank you. I'm glad you find them helpful. By the way, we'll, we will continue this conversation on communication tomorrow, maybe even. Well, now Friday is Q&A, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, Scott, Chicago, good morning. Sandra made it for roll call up in Westerville, Ohio. Love it. Hey, Sandra. Hey, Stuart in Georgia, John, or rather Jim in Greenwood, Missouri. Um, Oops, my stream just moved on me. Uh, Where'd it go? Here we go. Okay. Leticia Howdy from San Antonio. All right. Franklin in Macon, Georgia. Catherine, South Africa. From South Africa, now living in North Italy. Wonderful. So glad I found your account last week. Well, Carolyn, we're glad you're here. Hey, Bob, what's up? Happy Wednesday to you in Central Florida. Hey, Dorian, Maryland, how are you doing? Curtis. Oh, you're welcome, Curtis. Thank you. Christopher, uh, you were in radio like me. Yes, I certainly was in radio for many years. 
I struggle with developing a personal read that connects instead of an announcer who reads. Well, it's tough. Yeah, it is. Christopher, it, you know, uh, I'll be honest with you. I've been doing this for 17 years. I still have to work at it. I have to be conscious of it because when you've worked in media, for those of you who've worked in TV and radio, you know this to be true. You develop a mode, a style, and part of that is that of necessity. Uh, when you're, you know, you're given scripts that have 45 seconds worth of copy and it, you have to cram it into 30 seconds. You're doing a, you know, you, you're on the air in a music-driven radio station. You've got 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds, uh, which is oftentimes dictated by your program director, which I was that guy. Uh, and, you, you know, you've got you've to condense your thought and what you're going to say into a certain time frame. You, you develop a habit of, um, of really being, of being fast and announcery out of, it's really out of necessity. It's survival. You have to. You know, uh, but voiceover is just a whole different thing. Just remember, in voiceover, usually, usually we have, there's room to breathe in a script. Not always, but oftentimes. Tony's on a streak, two days up early for the live stream in Denmark, uh, Wisconsin. Yeah, love it. Love it, love it, Tony. Thank you. Ian Wilmington, North Carolina. Curtis, what's up? Amanda. Uh, Let's see here. Jim in Alabama. M.O. is Missouri. Okay, Jim, my bad. That makes more sense. A beach in Missouri would be more likely than a beach in Montana. Not that it couldn't be done, but just saying. Hey, uh, Guy, good morning. Dina in Oklahoma City. Oh, my gosh, so many people on the live stream this morning. This is amazing. Uh, Tom in Pittsburgh. Darren is having, there in the U.K., is having egg on toast for lunch. Okay, now here in the U.S. we call that breakfast, but I'll be honest with you, Darren, I like breakfast any time of the day. I love breakfast for lunch. I love breakfast for dinner. I love breakfast as a midnight snack. I I love bacon. I love eggs. I love French toast. I, I, it's my favorite meal. I love it all. Jim at the Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri, the state that's represented by M.O. Uh, Bortasha. In New Hampshire, Stuart, what's up? Good morning, Manuel. Uh, let's see, Michelle in Indianapolis. We've got, oh, Athens, Greece in the house. Good morning. Hey, Cheyenne. Uh, JR in Austin. Ken in Alcona Beach, Ontario, Canada. Montana is MT, Bruce says. He thinks that it is. That, that makes sense. Hey, Shane in Nashville, what's up? And then uh, we've got Joni in San Francisco. Okay. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to keep doing this roll call thing. Although, I don't know. I enjoy it. I don't know. Are you up for it? If so, you know, we can keep doing it. That's cool. I love it. I love seeing who's on the live stream. I I appreciate those of you who are here pretty much every day. It's awesome. I I recognize your names and where you're from. And those of you who are new, it's always a thrill to have you on. Uh, I'm just, um, you know, excited to, to share my thoughts on voiceover from my experience and want to see you be successful as well. So thanks for being here. Have a great day. Remember, communication, that is the most important thing. And I look forward to uh, seeing you tomorrow morning.